are going to study torque on a current loop magnetic dipole and uh, that first derivation is torque on a rectangular current loop placed in a uniform magnetic field. So we can consider a rectangular current loop PQRS a rectangular current loop of length A and breadth B carrying current I is placed in an external magnetic field B. Direction of magnetic field is from north to south. Okay, so this is a rectangular current loop length A breadth B carrying current I is placed in an external magnetic field. We know that when a current carrying conductor of length L current I is placed in an external magnetic field it experiences a force F equal to I L B sin theta is not it. So, here also P Q is a conductor P Q is a conductor carrying current I of length B is placed in which magnetic field external magnetic field B. So, normally it experiences a force F 1 equal to I B B sin theta is not it. So, theta is what is theta? Theta is the angle between length in the direction of current and magnetic field. So, length in the direction of current and magnetic field are perpendicular therefore, theta is equal to 90 degree therefore, force experienced by side P Q is F 1 equal to I B B and from Fleming's left hand room what is the direction of that force here magnetic field is towards right current is in the upward direction. So, force is into the plane. So, it experiences a normal inward force clear and that force in the figure we can represent as inward. So, it can be represented like this it represents an inward force ok. Similarly, the side R s experience a force R s is also a current carrying conductor. So, it also experience a force same force F2 equal to I B B ok and what is the direction of that force here magnetic field current is in the downward direction. So, it experience a normal outward force. So, it experience a normal outward force and in the figure it can be represented like this outward that is F2. Ok, so there are two forces normally inward force and normally outward force and these two forces are acting at two ends of the rectangular current loop and hence we can say that the two equal and opposite force we know it constitute a couple is not it. It constitute a couple hence two forces are acting on the rectangular loop like this is a rectangular loop it is placed like this slightly inclined. So, this side is side P Q and this one is right side R S. So, P Q side experience a force into the plane and R S side force is experience a force outward. So, loop is placed like this this side P Q side experience a force into the plane and R S side is experience a force outward and because of that the rectangular loop begins to rotate ok children. So, F 1 and F 2 are equal and opposite which constitute a couple and hence the rectangular loop begins to rotate with a torque. We know torque is given by magnitude of force into perpendicular distance is not it. So, magnitude of force is F 1 and F 2 magnitude is I B B no problem, but what is the perpendicular distance between the two forces the line of action of the two forces here this is side Q R no one force is acting into the plane other force is acting outward. So, perpendicular distance so this is side Q R one force acting into that is represented like this and an F 2 is acting outward it is represented like this. So, perpendicular distance is not Q R is not it what is the perpendicular distance here this is X R represents the perpendicular distance ok. So, torque is equal to force into perpendicular distance what is the perpendicular distance here x r represent the perpendicular distance right. Then how will you find out that x r we know this is a vector acting perpendicular normally outward that is the area vector we know area vector is normally outward the direction of area vector is not. So, if we consider this figure this is side q r normally outward means outward like this this is the direction of outward vector ok this is the direction of outward vector. So, this is the direction area vector and again from the figure we know that magnetic field is towards right. So, this is the area vector this is the magnetic field let the angle between them is theta. So, if this is theta what is this small angle this will be 90 minus theta and this is also 90 minus theta this one is 90 no. So, from the geometry we can say that this angle is theta that you know. So, this angle will be theta. Now, how will you find out the value of x r the magnitude of x r from this right angled triangle what we have can take sin theta. So, from the triangle q x r sin theta is equal to what is sin theta opposite side x r divided by hypotenuse q r 
clear so sin theta is equal to xr we have to find out xr divided by what is the value of qr we know that qi is equal to side a isn't it so a so xr equal to a sin theta then substitute in the formula torque is equal to magnitude of force what is the magnitude of force it is equal to i b b into a sin theta so it can be written as i a and b can be taken together i a b b sin theta is equal to i into what is area area means length into breadth isn't it so a into b means length into breadth that represents the area of the rectangular loop so i equal uh, that tau equal to i a b sin theta clear so because a, a into b means area of the rectangular loop so torque is given by i a b sin theta now we are introducing a new term here i a current into area current into area is given by a magnetic dipole moment okay so i a is called a magnetic dipole moment so we have studied electric dipole moment in the first chapter similarly a rectangular loop current into area is called a magnetic dipole moment yeah it is not only applicable for rectangular loop it is applicable for circular loop also that we will study in the next section right so tau equal to i a b sin theta therefore tau is given by m b sin theta okay so tau equal to m b sin theta and in vector form we can write vector tau equal to m cross b clear so torque experienced by rectangular current loop placed in an external magnetic field is given by tau equal to m b sin theta and m is called i a current into area and what is its unit we can say current into area so hence in its unit is what is the unit current into area ampere meter square so its unit is ampere meter square and therefore torque is given by m b sin theta and in vector form tau equal to m cross b now what is the direction of a magnetic dipole moment magnetic dipole moment is i a isn't it and the direction is same as that of the area vector so the direction of area vector and direction of magnetic dipole moment are same okay so magnetic dipole moment is in the direction of the area vector hence we can say we know when a electric dipole of dipole moment p is placed in an external electric field e it experiences a torque tau equal to p e sin theta that you know similarly now we have studied when a rectangular current loop of magnetic moment m is placed in an external magnetic field b it also experiences a torque tau equal to m b sin theta where m is called magnetic dipole moment b is the external magnetic field theta is the angle between magnetic dipole moment and magnetic field okay hence we can say that rectangular current loop is a magnetic dipole because the torque experienced by the electric dipole moment electric dipole and the torque experienced by rectangular current loop are in the same form here tau equal to p sin theta here tau equal to mb sin theta therefore we can say that rectangular current loop is a magnetic dipole so what is a magnetic dipole when a rectangular current loop when placed in an external magnetic field it experiences a torque and hence rectangular current loop is a magnetic dipole so magnetic dipole one example is rectangular current loop okay children we can study circular current loop as a magnetic dipole we know magnetic field on the axis of a circular current loop let r be the radius of the circular current loop carrying current i i be the current flowing and magnetic field at a point on the axis p be a point on the axis of the circular current loop its magnetic field is given by b equal to mu zero i r square divided by 2 into r square plus x square the whole raised to 3 by 2 this is the application of biot severs law that you know now if uh, x is the distance along the axis from the center of the loop if x is much greater than r if x is much greater than r we may drop r square in the denominator we can drop this r square and hence written as b equal to mu zero i r square divided by 2 x cube okay 
So since r square is dropped out and x square the whole raised to 3 by 2 is x cube. So b equal to mu 0 i r square divided by 2 x cube. Now multiply numerator and denominator of the right hand side by 2 pi. So it becomes b equal to mu 0 i pi r square into 2 divided by 4 pi x cube multiplying numerator and denominator by 2 pi. Now we know that i into pi r square, i pi r square means area no. So i into a is called magnetic dipole moment ok. Hence it can be written as b is equal to mu 0 mu 0 2 m divided by 4 pi x cube. So, we b equal to mu 0 by 4 pi 2 m divided by x cube. Thus, this expression is very similar to an expression obtained earlier for electric field on the axis of an electric dipole that is E equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 2 p by r cube. Okay. So, here mu 0 by 4 pi and in that electrostatic is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0. Here 2 m and in that electrostatic is 2 p. Here distance, here also distance, here in this case distance is re represented by x cube, in that case distance is represented by x cube or r cube, no problem. Anyway, x or r represents the distance. And hence because of this analogy, we can say that circular current loop acts as a magnetic dipole, it has a magnetic dipole moment and hence because of this analogy shown by circular current loop and a uh, electric dipole. The circular current loop act as a magnetic dipole. So, because of the analogy, circular current loop act as a magnetic dipole. So, thus we have studied two examples for magnetic dipole, rectangular current loop and circular current loop. The analogy is carried out for uh, further and the magnetic field on the equatorial plane of circular current loop is B equal to mu 0 by 4 pi m by x cube. Okay, so magnetic field on the axial plane is B equal to mu 0 by 4 pi 2 m by x cube and magnetic field on the equatorial plane is B equal to mu 0 by 4 pi m divided by x cube. Now we are going to study magnetic dipole moment of a revolving electron. We know according to Bohr model of hydrogen atom electrons are revolving around the nucleus. Okay, negatively charged electron revolve around the positively charged nucleus. This uh, uniform circular motion of the electron is equivalent to a circular current loop and we know that circular current loop possesses a magnetic dipole moment Ia. Okay. And here according to the figure this is the nucleus and electron is revolving around the nucleus in definite orbit. The motion of the electron around the nucleus it constitute a current I equal to charge divided by time. Here I equal to E divided by T. Here T represents a time period of revolution of the electron. Let uh, the electron is revolving in the anti-clockwise direction. We can assume electron is revolving in the anti-clockwise direction around the nucleus and the orbital radius is r and with the orbital speed v. Hence speed v can be written as distance divided by time. So total distance for one complete revolution is 2 pi r divided by the time period t. Okay. And we know that current is equal to charge by time. So, substituting the value of t, we can write E v divided by 2 pi r. And the magnetic moment due to this orbital motion of the electron is given by the magnetic moment. Magnetic moment due to the orbital motion. Due to the motion of the electron is we know magnetic moment is Ia, isn't it? Here magnetic moment due to the orbital motion can be represented by mu. So magnetic moment mu equal to Ia and we can substitute the value of current Ev divided by 2 pi r into what is the area pi r square. It is moving in the circular path, no? So area is pi r square. So we can simplify and write Evr divided by 2. Now what is the direction of this magnetic moment as the negative charge electron is uh, moving in the anti-clockwise direction. We have taken electron is moving in the anti-clockwise direction according to the figure and hence what is the direction of current, current is in the clockwise. So if current is in the clockwise the direction of magnetic moment is into the plane of the paper using right hand thumb rule. Current is in this direction magnetic moment is into, into the plane of the paper. 
So the direction of magnetic moment is perpendicular to the plane of the paper into the plane of the orbit into the plane of paper and which is using right hand thumb rule. We can multiply numerator and denominator by mass of the electron. Okay, so we have the formula mu is equal to E V R divided by 2. Next step is multiplying numerator and denominator by m that which is the mass of the electron. Hence the formula becomes mu equal to E V R into m divided by 2R. 2m sorry 2m then this can be rearranged as e by 2m into mvr okay so what is this mvr we can rearrange it so it is e divided by 2m into mvr and we know that mvr mass into velocity into the distance it is called angular momentum so angular momentum of the electron due to the orbital motion is angular momentum is given by mvr angular momentum of the electron is angular momentum is represented by L, L equal to m v r. Okay. Thus we obtain the formula mu is equal to E divided by 2 m into L. So magnetic moment, magnetic dipole moment mu is equal to E divided by 2 m into L. And uh, we can write mu by L. If L is taken to the denominator, d mu by L equal to E divided by 2m, which is a constant. Charge E represents the charge of the electron, M represents the mass of the electron. If we substitute the value, the answer is 8.8 .8 into 10 raised to 10. Charge by mass, no? So its unit is coulomb per kilogram. So mu by L, magnetic dipole moment of the revolving electron divided by angular momentum is given by 8.8 .8 into 10 raised to 10 coulomb per kilogram and this value is called a gyro magnetic ratio. This is called a gyro magnetic ratio. Okay. So it is gyro magnetic ratio and uh, its value is 8.8 .8 into 10 raised to 10 coulomb per kilogram for an electron and uh, it has been verified by experiments. Now again come to the first form we have mu equals E divided by 2m into L no. But from Bohr condensation condition what is this angular momentum from Bohr condensation condition angular momentum L equals Bohr condensation condition we know that angular moment L equal to nh divided by 2 pi. L equal to nh divided by 2 pi. If you substitute the value here magnetic moment mu equal to E divided by 2m into nh divided by 2 pi and n is called the principal constant number h is called the Planck's constant. If you simplify n e h divided by 4 pi m. So magnetic dipole moment of the revolving electron is also given by mu equal n e h divided by 4 pi m. And the importance of this formula is we can say that magnetic dipole moment is directly proportional to principal quantum number because mu equal to n e h divided by 4 pi m isn't it. So mu is directly proportional to the principal quantum number m. If uh, for the first orbit, for the first orbit, what is the value of n, n equal to 1? So, mu is equal to n equal to 1 e h divided by 4 pi m. All the values are constant e, charge of the electron 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19, h, Planck's constant 6.63 into 10 raised to minus 34 divided by 4 pi into mass of the electron which is 9.1 into 10 raised to minus 31. If you substitute all the values you will get 9.27 into 10 raised to minus 24 ampere meter square because it is magnetic dipole moment no. So it is 9.27 into 10 raised to minus 24 ampere meter square. So it is a minimum value of magnetic dipole moment of an electron. And this value or this is called a Bohr magneton. 
this is called a bore magnitude and the value 9.27 into 10 raised to minus 24 ampere meter square is called a bore magnetron. Clear?